it's here and it's stunning. First impressions on this Thunderbolt laser, the quality of the build materials and the fit and finish of this unit are outstanding. I can't wait to see it start to perform. Welcome back. Today is not an unboxing video. There are plenty of those in the internet. Bolts in, unboxed, I've done the setup, got it vented to the outside. Now I need to make connectivity between my MacBook and the bolt itself. That's what we're doing today. I'm gonna to show you how to connect your Mac computer to the Thunderbolt using the ethernet cable. Otherwise described as an ad hoc direct connection. I'm Gord Potter and you're watching LaserNug. Just a few acknowledgements going forward. For you folks that are new to the channel, I am not at all computer literate. I don't know a lot about IT things or networks or what an IP address or how IP addresses connect, Ethernet versus Wi-Fi routers. All that stuff is a little foreign to me. So it might have taken me a little longer than some of you folks if you're, if you're used to that type of thing or you've got some experience in it. It was a bit difficult. Keeping in mind that most every video you see on YouTube, including the user manual for the Thunderbolt and many other references, both in the knowledge base and otherwise, all reference different ways to connect your Bolt to a Windows-based PC. I'm a Mac user, but with a little help from my friends or my new friends at Thunder Laser Canada, checking out and reading repeatedly the knowledge base on Thunder Laser US and watching some of their videos, I believe I finally figured out how to piece it together. Well, I did. And it literally took me less than five minutes to set up the correct settings in my Mac, to connect through Lightburn, and to immediately begin communicating with the Bolt. I know you're probably pretty excited to get going, but here's the things you need to do before you attempt connection to the Bolt. You're gonna unbox it, get it situated on your work table, remove all the packaging, tie wraps, etc. You're going to want to connect your venting to the outside, clean your mirrors and your lenses as required. And once you're all set up, you're going to plug in the power cord. And I'm going to put two links into the description of this video below. The first link is going to be to what I believe is the best unboxing video that's available to you on YouTube today. It was created by Thunder Laser USA, and I haven't found a better unboxing video for the Bolt yet. The second one was created by Thunder Laser on their YouTube channel, and it describes and shows you how to clean the mirrors and your lenses before your first use, in case any dust has gotten into the unit as it got transported to your house. If you plan on using Lightburn software on your Mac, this is the next most important thing to do. Please download Lightburn to the Mac and have it set up. If you're not sure how to do that, I'll put a link to my Lightburn install video here above me. Please make sure it's on the Mac you're gonna to have to set up a proxy or fake device to get it open and working, but you wanna have it working before you attempt connection to the Bolt. I just find it worked out excellent for me to have it there before I tried to connect and communicate with the Bolt. You're also gonna need the following components. When your Bolt arrived, it came with this big bag. Inside this bag, there's a gold card with some writing on it. You need to have this ready. You're also going to find a USB thumb drive that says Thunder Laser on it. Lots of important information on here that you don't ever want to lose. If your Mac is a more recent model and it only has USB-C ports on it, you're going to need to make sure that you've got some type of an adapter in order to plug in your thumb drive. You're also going to need the blue Ethernet cable that came with the bolt. And similarly, you're also going to need to have on hand an Ethernet to USB-C adapter in order to connect it to your Mac. You also received a black USB printer cable that came with your Bolt. We're not going to need that today because I won't be connecting the camera or setting the camera on the Bolt up yet. If you've been watching any of the YouTube videos created by Thunder Laser USA, you'll note that they highly, highly caution against using this printer cable to establish communication to your Mac and Lightburn they strongly recommend that you do that communication through the internet cable. And they also reference these same cautions in their knowledge base. That's why we're connecting with an ethernet. I believe it's intimated that there may be connection issues when you're trying to use a standard USB cable, which is why they highly recommend against it. But we are gonna need this when it's time to connect and operate the camera. We'll do that in another video. 
the last couple of things left, I'd strongly recommend you read the Mac related ad hoc direct connection materials and reference materials and guides in Thunder Laser USA's knowledge base. I'll put that link down below as well. For me, it was awfully confusing because I think they've got a lot of information that at first glance I didn't understand, but after reading it numerous times, I finally think I kind of got the hint of what I was supposed to do and it turned out I did. The second thing you need is you're going to need the IP address of the bolt which is standard for all of us. It's the same address whether I've received one or you have. If you're not sure where to find that, you'll see it on the screen of the Bolt. It's always there. And it's also captured in your Thunderbolt user's manual. Either way, I have it for you today. There's also what they call a submask address that you're gonna to need to know. And I've got that as well, as well as some settings you need to do in your Mac. And I'll give that to you today in the video. So if you've got all that stuff ready and at your fingertips and good to go, let's do it. For reference, it's the end of December 2023. I'm currently running the Sonoma OS on my Mac version 14.2 and the Lightburn that I've downloaded is the latest release and that's version 1.4.04. So now our first step is we want to confirm or make sure that the IP address assigned to your Mac on your home network or to the computer itself is not the exact same IP address as your Thunderbolt. Again, I'm not very computer literate. I don't know a lot about IT. So my simple understanding is that when you're trying to connect two devices or pieces of equipment together, they can't have the same name. And simply put, the IP address is the name of the device. So you know that the IP address for the Thunderbolt is 192.168.1.100. And what we wanna do before we go further is we wanna make sure that the Mac does not actually have the exact same IP address as its name. So let's do that now. I'm gonna ask you to go to the left-hand corner, click the Apple, go on System Settings. You wanna go down to Network on the left-hand side there, and you're going to see some information regarding your Wi-Fi. I see it's connected. You wanna to click to the right on the arrow. You're gonna see that I'm connected to an SSID or my Wi-Fi is named Winston. I wanna click on details. And what you see here is down around the middle of the page, you'll see the IP address of my MacBook. It's 10.0.0.241. So right now I know I'm good. My Mac IP address is completely different than the IP address on the Bolt. In the event though, you find that for some reason your Mac has the identical IP address of the Bolt, I would advise that you go back to the knowledge base on Thunder Laser USA and read thoroughly through a lot of the reference material they have there on what to do in the event that that occurs. Either way, we're in good shape right now. I've got a separate name for my MacBook or IP address than the name of my bolt. You're gonna take your ethernet cable, reach down here below, and you're gonna plug it into your bolt until you hear the click. You're gonna take the other end, connect your adapter, and now take your adapter and plug it into your Mac. Grab your USB adapter, plug that into your Mac, and take the thumb drive that you received with your bolt and connect it to your adapter. You have your thumb drive and all the information connected in as an external drive. And now I want you to open Lightburn in your computer and leave it on your desktop open. Turn on your bolt and leave it running the whole time. So I'm gonna go down to the bottom right window where it says devices and I'm gonna click on that. I'm going to come down, I'm going to click the import button. I'm going to click on that thumb drive and it's going to bring me up a menu with all of the information on that thumb drive. I want to go under Thunderbolt Laser. I'm going to click on communication settings and there's two options there. You'll see Enet in the middle of the one and USB in the middle of the second. You do not want the USB. You're going to click on the file that has Enet written in there at the end and you're going to open it and now you'll see it there listed in your devices. You're gonna click on it and you're gonna click OK. And now if you look under devices, 
if we go to the right hand side and click on the option, there's that device. I'm going to click on it. And now you can see that my Bolt ENET is now the device that's chosen. It's still disconnected. Now I'm going to take my cursor and I'm going to go back up to the top left hand corner and I'm going to click on my Apple and I'm going to open up system settings again. I'm going to go down and click on network again and I just want to freeze you there. Notice at the top of the network list, I was quite impressed. I didn't realize that the Mac would recognize my Belkin adapter on the Ethernet cable and it's already captured that there's a connection there and it's put a place mark for it. But we need to change a few of the settings. Let's click on the arrow on the right hand side and you'll see some details there and we're going to have to make some changes. So we want to click on the details. We'll go down, click on TCP IP. There's just a couple of changes to make. You want to change it to manually and you're going to need to input a new IP address for your Mac. That IP address is 192.168.1.101. You'll note the submask is 255.255.255.0 and that's what it's supposed to be. So we didn't need to make any changes there. And now we'll click on OK. And now we can close out of the Apple system settings. Now we're going to go back into Lightburn. I want you to go up to the middle of the top toolbar and click on the wrench and screwdriver icon. And lo and behold, there's all of your information for your bolt. While you're on this first screen here of basic settings, you want to take the gold card that was provided to you in the bag and you just want to confirm that the two settings you'll see in the middle of the screen for speed at 500 and speed at 1000 show the same settings that you have on your gold card and if they're not then you need to revise and change them. They should be the same though. Then you want to going to click the second tab that says additional settings and you want to click read from controller. And my understanding is that this will get real-time, any real-time updated controller settings and import them in here for you. We click OK and you'll see right down here at the bottom right hand corner it says ready. It sees the laser. It says ready. And you're all set up and connected. And that's it. Honestly it took me less than five minutes. I know it's been a bit of a long video but I just wanted to make sure that for folks like myself I was able to outline every step that I went through. I understand from Thunder Laser you don't ever want to lose this card and you don't want to lose this USB thumb drive. So you want to keep them safe with the unit's tools. Once I figured out how to connect the camera, I'll get a video out on that. But right now I'm just a little excited to get a little project out under Lightburn, get it sent to the laser and then watch it perform. I hope you found today's video helpful. And I want to send out a special thanks to the helpful and friendly folks at Thunder Laser Canada. Thank you for spending some time with me today, and I hope to see you on the next one. Cheers.